context of what it is that we've been studying and preaching on in this month as we have marched for marriage, it, it, it has created this environment whereas there's no real difference between us. There's no need for us to highlight or deal with the fact that we were uniquely created differently. The movement would love to have us ignore or overlook the fact that we have been born and created in his image as there is a difference in the sense that when he went to talk about the fact that we were created in his image, he then in turn said both male and female. Even though we have all been created, we have not been created equally. Right. Amen. Right with me. I'm, I feel like I just lost him. <laughs> <laughs> the ignorance or the denial of this biblical truth can and will dramatically affect everything in our lives. The Bible says that we were both created in His image, but it expands on the difference in the way we were created and the nature and the purpose for that in the very next chapter of the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, the Lord God formed the man. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible says, the Lord God made the woman. Since we both have been created in His image, we share a uniqueness that no other created thing can boast. In God's infinite wisdom, he has chosen to prove his dynamic nature by creating two distinct reflections of himself. And it's in the manifestation of both male and female that we now can get a pure picture of who God is. But you can't do it if you don't know there's a difference. Therefore, making the reflecting of who it is that God has called us to be the very pursuit of what our lives should consist of. And when we join together in marriage, we must recognize that we achieve the ultimate reflection of his presence in the earth. Just as the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit represent the ultimate picture of God, Marriage between a husband and a wife, the two becoming one flesh, serves as the ultimate reflection of the true image of God, making our job simply to play our position so that he might be seen in the earth. Lord, help me. Just ride with me. I promise we're going somewhere. Anytime we are not living out our created purpose, we are operating in disobedience. Therefore, we cannot expect to feel fully fulfilled in anything we do, let alone ever achieve the peace of God, because we only have a peace of God. My assignment for today in talking about being created in His image is to deal with the made-in form of the image of God. My assignment over the course of the next couple of moments is to deal with the created person that is in the image of God that was made. Somebody say ladies first. As we proceed to march for marriage because marriage matters to God, the kind of marriage we have or the kind of marriage we can have, the kind of marriage we should have, should matter to us. It's important to note as I proceed, that this message goes in connection with the other two messages, and it will culminate next week. So don't nobody get too mad too soon. Just don't die till next week. <laughs> now, it's important to know that all wives are female, but every female ain't white. Amen. Amen. There are three developmental stages within each created form or maid in God. The first one in the maiden form of the image of God is female. This is the first stage 
where we understand separation. And it is this stage that highlights the distinguishable difference from male. And the focus on this difference helps us to create unique opportunities that capitalize on this created difference. If you haven't quite settled the fact that you're a female and you're not a male, then everything that God has for you shall be distorted. That's right. That's right. If you aren't clear that there is a difference in the way you were created and the way that I was created, then you can interpret everything that God says from the wrong perspective. If nothing works, then here is something out of context. Because the moment you hear it out of context, you can arrive at the wrong destination. You can come to the wrong conclusion. You can ultimately make an assumption. And we all know what happens when you assume. I'll leave that alone. Some of y'all so saved, it went right past. But the second stage in the maiden form of his image is not just female, but which is separation, but it is significant, which is woman. So we go from female to woman, because now we understand that there is a significant difference, not just a created difference, but a significant difference, which makes you a woman. Uh, it is in this stage where we find the focus on both the role and purpose and the unique contribution in creation. Here, the focus is on the ability to be a receiver and a developer. See, a woman can do something that a man can't do. Yeah. It makes no difference what men do. We can never do what you can do. <laughs> There's no way you can twist it, turn it, flip it, reverse it, stick it, unstick it. It will still never create that which you have uniquely designed to be able to be a receiver and a developer. You have the ability to take something and make something. Oh, yeah. I need you to know that that is significant. There ain't no man that has ever been created that can do that. And that is nothing to look down on, to frown upon, or to look away from. Miles Monroe said it this way, you give a woman a house and she'll make it a home. You give a woman a word and she'll give you a sentence. <laughs> It's the 
submissive stage that that you move to in order to be prepared to receive a man as your husband and to develop something out of it that's greater than the I do. Okay, come on, let's, let's go. The work the wife is the stage where we're going to find ourselves parking for today. It is at this stage that she understands the form in being female and her contribution in the uniqueness of being a woman, but now her focus, once she reaches the wife stage, is on her ability to keep and maintain the covenant. So to gain proper biblical perspective uh, on the maiden form of, of, of wives, what it means to be created in the image of God to be a wife, uh, we need another reference point. I go to Ephesians chapter 5. Some of you all knew I was headed in this direction. <laughs> Ephesians chapter right. 5, starting in verse 22. Now, now, ladies, say ladies. Yeah. All right, just want to make sure that you're here in the house. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Uh, a moment ago, before I took my test, we were... <laughs> and he experienced something happened. That wasn't contrived, that wasn't made up, it was true. You called on him and he showed up and something happened. And, and we proved the fact that the reason why that happened is the fact that everything in this word, either it's true or it's not. You cannot, we shall not, smoke it for Okay. You go in and say a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you get filled off of being schizophrenic. <laughs> it's so bad that you're so settled in not having to make an ultimate choice to commit to that you always leave those kinds of dying experiences more filled than any other place. You, you generally leave out miserable. Can I get a witness? All because you have the ability to not commit to nothing. So, uh, I'm hoping I'm going to get a little help from the ladies on this side. Because even if you are really excited about what the Word says, I already invited you to come out next week. <laughs> Thought here. <laughs> Your first thought when I read the text was whatever. 